Happy anniversary to me. Happy anniversary to you. We got some miles on us, baby, but we still good as new. <laughs> I think you better do a little speaking to me. <laughs> oh, you must be Mrs. Evans. Yes, uh, baby, this is uh, December Jackson. <laughs> I mean, uh, Gloria Jackson. <laughs> She's a friend of Charlie's. She got the calendars. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the weekend's mixed up. <laughs> You ain't two together yourself, lover. <laughs> well, I think I'll be going now. And, oh, just thanks so much for the oh, use of welcome, the fire. Oh, you're welcome, And... <laughs> I'll just be, um, getting on down the road, and I'll just see you guys... Oh, James! <laughs> um, yeah. You know, if you like, I'll stop by the office someday and autograph that calendar. <laughs> <laughs> what calendar? Huh? Uh, oh, you know, one of them nature things. Uh, mountains. <laughs> mountains and trees and all that kind of stuff, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you admiring the scenery. Now, Florida, you know you're the only scenery I want to look at, baby. She might have been messed this summer, but you my calendar girl all year long. Every year. Mm -hmm. And just keep getting better and better and better, baby. You improve with age, too, lover. All right. <laughs> I got something to tell you, baby. And I got something to tell you, too, honey. Now, look, I've been thinking about this school business, and I figured that... You don't have to worry about that no more. That's what I want to talk to you about. Well, me, too. Look, I... Honey, it ain't worth what we've been going through. Right. So, so I... I made a decision. Florida, will you just let me get one word in? So you don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to school anymore. I'm going to study at home. Damn it, Florida, you're doing it again. Well, look, if you ain't going to let me talk, at least let me show you something, huh? Hey, Mama, that's a book bag. All the kids in school have them. Yeah, I got it for you. But, James, I thought you didn't want yeah, me to well, go to school. Baby, I was wrong. Look, I took a good, long, hard look at myself, and what I saw was a selfish guy who was just afraid <laughs> of something he didn't understand. Florida, you supposed to be in school. You're a smart woman. That's where you belong. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's good. Oh, James. Just when I think I know you, I find out something more wonderful all the time. Well, I got you to thank for one thing. Well, I tell you, there's a lot of days around here we know whether he's going to make it or not. I must inherit your stubbornness. Because there's one thought that never crossed my mind. That was walking out. See, because I knew how my family was going to feel. So I stayed, man. I stayed. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Uh, maybe I should have stuck it out. But that's been over 35 years. I'm a different man now. When I left Mississippi, I, I bummed around for a long time looking for work. A long time. A long time before I went to sea. And when I was able to send some money home, I, you all had gone. Yeah. Oh, man, how come you never tried to find me? I ain't never got a postcard or a phone call, nothing. Where you been, man? I tried to find you at first. But then nobody knew where you went. If it wasn't for Thelma, I still wouldn't know where you were. But that don't cut no ice with me. Well, I really used to look up to you. 
I swore the sun rose and set on you. We sure missed out on a lot of fun together. Jimmy, I missed over 35 years without a son. And me without a father. Well, it's too late now. Can't neither one of us ever get it back. Yes, I know. And this is a hell of a time to admit a mistake. Yes, I've been stubborn and full of foolish pride. And after all this time, I had some gall coming in here and calling you son. So I, maybe I gave up that right a long, long time ago. So I guess I best be shoving off. But Jimmy, you've got to understand this. My leaving wasn't because I didn't love you. It was because I did. Oh, man. Bye, Jimmy. Uh, uh, look here. We got um, some birthday uh, cake and stuff. Uh, I mean, you here, you might as well stay for the party. You sure you want me to stay? Uh, you was always one saying, don't ever waste no food, wasn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, in that case, let's do it up right. I'll break out the muscatel and give him a real house warming. <laughs> James, plants don't blossom on muscatel. No, but I do. <laughs> Them plants can continue to get high on fertilizer. <laughs> well, I got the slip covers finished. Oh, James, everything is looking so good. I'm getting so excited. Oh, now, baby, I know how important this contest is to you, but don't you think you went overboard a little bit? I mean, the money you spent for them slip covers, you could have made yourself a new dress. I saved money, James. Huh? The sofa takes less material than I do. <laughs> don't you go putting yourself down here, because I like you just the way you are. There's plenty to hug, plenty to squeeze. Oh, James. <laughs> and I know there's always enough left over for next time. <laughs> You sure know how to make a Weight Watcher drop out feel good. Just jiving, just jiving. Hello, this is Special Investigator Monroe, FBI. We've got an emergency here. We need transportation fast. 963 North Gilbert Avenue. You got it? Thank you. Okay, let's go. Thanks a lot for helping us out, Mr. Evans. Yeah. And Mrs. Evans, I'm, I'm sorry it turned out this way. So am I. Daddy? Yeah? I want to apologize. For what, Michael? For thinking Cletus was a hero. I acted just like a kid. Oh, that's all right, son. You didn't know no better. But I do know one thing for sure. When it comes to heroes, there's only one in this house. Well, it's nice of you to say that, little brother. <laughs> JJ, I was talking about Daddy. Now, Michael, as much as I appreciate that, I ain't no hero. You have to be no hero to catch a chop like that. No, I think, son, if you're talking about heroes, you're thinking about people like Martin Luther King or Thurgood Marshall or Med Gevers. And James Evans Sr. Right on, right on. James Evans Sr. You did it, Sr. Nick. Oh, now, come on, baby, stop crying. It's gonna be just as tough on me as it is on you. I ain't gonna be doing nothing but working and getting homesick and being entertained. <laughs> huh? Oh, Walona told me what goes on in them construction camps. Oh, uh, Walona, princess running mouth. <laughs> Look, I heard all about them camps, too, but you don't think I'm gonna be involved in none of that stuff, do you? No, you wouldn't, James. All I'm gonna be doing is marking on the calendar and writing letters to you every night. Like this? What's that? It's a letter I got long time ago. James, you know, we only been apart one day in all the 20 years of our marriage. Yeah, that was one day I went out of town looking for work. Mm-hmm. You weren't even gone 24 hours, and you wrote me a 10-page letter. <laughs> yeah, every time I tried to fall asleep, I had to add another page. <laughs> <laughs> James, 
if this is only for one day, what you gonna do when you're gone for a whole year? Use up a hell of a lot of pencils. <laughs> you know, this is the only love letter I ever got. It better be. It's the only one I ever wrote. <laughs> I didn't get the job, Florida, but I don't care. Being away from you hurts me too much. I'll never leave you again. Please, James, just for JJ. <laughs> all right, all right. As much as I'm against this character, Junior, I ain't gonna be the one to stand in your way. Good. Thanks, Dad. I knew you'd come through, because you're the greatest dad in the whole world. You're kind, you're considerate, you're compassionate. That's because I love you, Dad. I love you. I knew you were great. Thanks, Dad. Boy, and to think I couldn't wait till he said his first words when he was a baby. <laughs> Boy, I don't want you going to that county hospital again. Oh, James, please, don't upset yourself. Everything's going to be all right. Florida? I'm gonna send you to a private doctor and see that you get to the best hospital in town. Now, James, don't start even thinking that way. Because you know we can't afford it. Well, why not, baby? I mean, I just got a raise and I got the health insurance at Brady's. What's it all good for if we ain't gonna use it? I mean, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes, honey. Well, then you got it. Florida, you my queen. And I love you. And for once in your life, you're gonna have the very best. A semi-private room. What happened? Did you graduate? Has a pig got knuckles? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, no, no. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a party. Let's get it on. Oh, oh, James is beautiful. Ain't it? You are now looking at a skilled laborer. No more busting my back on the loading dock at Brady's. This means good pay, good jobs, and goodbye, 79 cent muscatel, and hello, dollar fifty champagne. <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello. Champagne? Ooh. That's nice, but can we afford it? Well, it's cheaper than gasoline. <laughs> Every time I go out with a dude now, instead of using perfume, I put two drops of high test behind each ear. <laughs> <laughs> what you think you're doing? You ain't old enough to drink. I'm 18. I'm old enough to die for my country. You don't put that glass down, you're gonna die in your living room. <laughs> Get some Kool-Aid with Thumb and Michael. JJ, you may not be old enough to drink yeah. yet, but they can always use you as a swizzle stick. Quiet, quiet, everybody. Mm. Listen, I want to make a toast to my husband, the graduate. Hey. Yeah. 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 Oh. Now, there are not many men who has his love and courage and devotion. And good looks. Oh. And modesty. <laughs> <laughs> 